Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'll be sharing four really fun fall DIYs with you guys. Before we get started, I wanna give a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. Later on, I'll be sharing some really fun projects like a DIY doormat and a personalized gift. It's gonna be a great video, so you'll wanna stick around. If you have not yet found me on Instagram, head on over and find me at Valerie Aguirre, where I share a lot of behind the scenes and fun stuff there. Okay, so let's get started. This first DIY is going to be some concrete pumpkins. So I'm gonna start out using some regular pantyhose. I bought a four pack at Target and I'm just going to take one pair of pantyhose. I'm actually going to be cutting them into fourths. So I'm going to cut off that top piece. You don't need that at all and just mainly keep the legs. And once you cut off that top part, you'll be left with the two legs. So I'm gonna fold those again in half and then cut them in half again. So this is actually going to give you four. So you could make four pumpkins out of one pair of pantyhose. So I'm going to start by using the one that have the closed toe and then the other two you'll have to kind of knot um, a hole at the very bottom so that the cement just doesn't slip right through. So these are the closed toe part. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put these in like a cup of some sort. I just want to be able to throw everything away. So um, this is actually like an old supplement container. I'm just gonna use this. So when I put the cement in, it has something to kind of hold on to. And for the gray pumpkin, I'm using the Fast Setting Quick Greet, and this actually has kind of like rocks in it, and I don't really like that in the pumpkin, so I'm gonna use like this little strainer type thing, and like I said, I just wanna be able to throw everything away and no mess, so everything I use is like disposable. I can just toss it right in the trash, so I'm gonna strain those rocks out because I don't want the rocks in there, and then I'm left with just the dry concrete. So I am going to mix a little bit of water. I'm just using a wooden paint stick to mix this up. And the consistency, I like it to be a little bit thicker just because the more watery it is, the more mess it makes. So I want it to be a little bit thicker consistency. And remember with the Quickrete, it dries really, really fast or hardens really, really fast. So you have to work fast if you're using the Quickrete. And I'm just gonna start spooning this or shoveling this into the pantyhose and kind of holding the top to support the weight. Once you get it pretty full or as full as you want it, the more you fill it, the bigger the pumpkin will be. I'm gonna take the pantyhose right from the top and pull it out and give it kind of a good smack on that um, cardboard or wherever you're doing this. And yeah, you just want all of that concrete to go to the very bottom. Once I get it all to the bottom, I'm gonna tie off that top part with a little knot. And then you can cut off the excess material with a pair of scissors. So I am just using kind of like a jute type rope. I used this in another DIY, I had some leftover, so this is what I used. You can really use any type of jute or rope or something that's not too thick, but will give you like a nice little line. So I'm just gonna tie this around and I kind of want to pull it really tight so it leaves those indentions in there. If you don't pull it tight enough, it won't leave kind of a strong indention. I'm actually going to double knot it to hold that strength there and then I'm gonna go ahead and do two more around this little pumpkin. This one was on the opposite side, so it's pretty much just like an X shape. Again, making sure that you pull tight because you do want those indentions. And then for the third string, I'm just gonna pick a side and put that kind of going in a diagonal. Again, double knot it, pull really tight. By this time, the quick read was getting stronger. And that's gonna be it for this little gray pumpkin. I'm gonna put it outside so it can dry for a couple hours. And then I'm gonna move on to the next one.
So this next pumpkin, I actually used white concrete and I will show you guys the exact one that I used, but it's basically the same concept. You want it a little bit thicker consistency. The only difference with this consistency is it has a little bit more of a fibrous texture. If you can see, they're kind of like little stringy type things in there. And this is a little bit more of kind of a gritty, sandy texture. So it is a little bit messier, but it is a really unique color. So I really like this one. And all of the steps are exactly the same as the first pumpkin, basically just filling up the pantyhose and then giving it a good smack once it's full, tying it off at the top. This cement does have a longer cure time. It's definitely not like the quick read. So this will take a good day and a half or so to cure. So you have to be patient with this one, but the white color is definitely worth it. So my favorite part is obviously unveiling these to see how they turned out. I just took a pair of scissors and cut all of the strings off. Some of them do get a little bit wedged in there, so you kind of have to tug at them to get them out. Most of them came out pretty easy though. And then kind of breaking open that pantyhose right there and getting all of that off. Another little quick tip. So if something kind of breaks or gets a little bit of a crack in there, this little piece gave me a really hard time. It did leave a little bit of a kind of raw edge. So I can sand that off. It really didn't bother me that much. So I can um, take them out back and hose them off, get all of that dust out. And then after I clean them off, I was able to put a little stem on there, kind of like a pumpkin stem um, with just some hot glue. And now for the white ones, like I said, these are a little bit more of kind of like a sandy texture. I feel like they're a little bit more delicate than the quickrete or the concrete, but they still look really cool and they are definitely a favorite. So these turned out really, really cool. I love that they're concrete. They will last year after year. So you can really put them anywhere, a front porch, a garden. You can put one on like a stack of books or a shelf and add a little bit of festive fall vibes to your home decor. I just love these. I thought they're so cute. The little stems are just a little tree branch that I cut kind of diagonal. And yeah, I think these turned out really cute. Okay, so moving on to the next project, I am going to use my Cricut design space and design some really cute words to make a DIY doormat. So I am gonna choose Hello Fall. The dimensions I used were 14 inches in width by two and a half inches in height. Before cutting it out, I made sure that each word has its own line so I could have two different stencils. And the material I will be cutting this out on is the Cricut Smart Paper sticker cardstock. I love using 
using the Smart Materials with my Cricut Maker 3 because you don't have to use a mat. They just go right into the machine and it starts cutting. It's so fun watching this machine cut. It is really neat how it does all of this in literally less than 30 seconds. It is so fast. So this doormat was $10 at Target. It's just a plain doormat. It's very simple. And I'm going to cut out the stencils now to place on the doormat and get ready to paint over. One of my favorite things about using the Cricut machines is you can really kind of customize anything or personalize anything to your style or your liking. I like a really minimal look, so it's hard to find a doormat that has a really minimal look like this. So I like designing my own. It's really fun and it really gives me that style that I am looking for. So using my little Cricut weeding tool, I am actually going to take the sticker part off and put those aside. You could use them for another project, but I really don't need them. So I'm just going to toss them for now, but I do want to keep that larger stencil part. So it leaves the letters empty because that's where I will be painting. You also do have to keep your centers. So the center of the O and then the center of the A, I will also be keeping those close by. I like using the sticker cardstock for a project like this because it does have the adhesive on the back which helps it stay on the rug. So now I'm going to be taking the backing off and placing this on the doormat in the correct placement that I want it. So I'm going to make sure that that is sticking on there pretty well and then the little center of the A I am also going to stick that on in the center as well and then start on the other part. Don't forget that little center pieces. Sometimes they do need a little bit of extra help with some tape on the back as well. You can use double stick tape or just like a little masking tape um, folded over. So I'm just using a black craft paint and a little sponge brush to brush over the letters. Very, very simple. and I did add a little bit of masking tape to help secure it. It was moving around a little bit more than I wanted it to with the paint, so the tape really helped make it stay in place. So I went over the stencil with one coat of paint and then let that dry, and then I went over with another coat of paint, so I actually did two coats. I added a little piece of tape to those centers to just give them a little extra help staying put with the paint. The Cricut Smart Sticker cardstock was the perfect material to use for a project like this. It made it so easy. It didn't break down once you started adding the paint. It didn't weaken the paper at all. It really held up much like a stencil should, and it really, really helped make this little paint project perfect. After two coats of paint, it was time to peel off the stencil so we can see how it turned out and I think it looks really good. So there's a couple little spotty parts in there from my painting. So I'm gonna fill those in with a little dab of black paint on a paintbrush and then we'll be good to go. And this extra little coat of paint to fill in those little spotty marks really, really helped darken those little light spaces and really bring it to life. One of my favorite things about using Cricut machines is you really get a value for your investment. You are able to make so many different projects and like I said, really customize and personalize things to your style, your liking, and your home. To finish this project off, I'm going to spray over my craft paint with a little bit of this clear matte spray paint just to give it a little bit of added protection for the fall weather. A lot of people think using a Cricut machine could be intimidating, but let me tell you, it is so super simple. The project ideas are endless, and if you visit Cricut.com, you can get a ton of ideas, supplies, and so much more there. I layered this really fun fall doormat right on top of a rug that was featured in my last fall video. If you guys have not caught that one, I will link it here. 
And moving on to the next DIY, I did a really fun fall wreath for my front porch. So I started at Hobby Lobby by finding some really unique preserved florals with really cool colors and textures, things that I wanted to incorporate onto my porch. I also needed a wreath, so I just grabbed one of these grapevine wreaths. They were really inexpensive, I think about $5.99, and they are a really good size. I also stopped in the ribbon section. I love incorporating ribbon into a really pretty wreath. This one was kind of like a canvasy white, but I felt like it was not really fall, but it was still really pretty. So there was also this kind of reddish burgundy wine color that was really neat. So lots of different options. I ended up going with something that I had at home, which is kind of more of a leather ribbon. So I wanted to incorporate that somehow. So these are the colors that I wanted for my wreath. I found this kind of pinkish reddish one in the faux floral. It's actually a good fall faux floral. <laughs> and I just started by taking my wire cutters and cutting off those faux florals. They don't have wire running all the way through, which makes it a little bit more difficult to work with. So you just have to get your floral wire and kind of tie them up on the ends. So what I do is I will take like two or three of these little faux florals, kind of um, layer them so they kind of sit really pretty all together. And then I'll just wrap them really tight around the bottom with some floral wire and then wrap the little end right around the edge there. So you can kind of push them into the wreath, but you probably want to secure them with an extra piece of wire just to make it last, make sure that it will stand the test of time. And then this little green grassy stuff I also picked up at Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to kind of shove it in there. It goes in really far so I'm not worried about it falling out at all. Um, and I'm going to kind of put this in the back so that it looks almost like a backdrop to that pink um, floral, almost like um, really layered. And then I'm going to take my wheat. I used about three different bunches of wheat. They were all kind of the same color and in the preserved floral section in Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to wrap the wire right around the end there, really nice and tight, and then give it a good snip with some scissors, leaving a little bit on the bottom for some length. And then I'm gonna do a second layer of wire just to keep it tight and all together. Then once you have your little mini stalks of wheat, I'm going to put those right there on the wreath. And you wanna make sure that everything is facing in the right direction. So you need to pick a direction and stay in that direction. Everything should be flowing the same way. Once I get the wheat in the correct place that I want it, I'm going to secure it with a little piece of wire and the next piece of wheat will go right over it so you will not see that wire at all. I love being able to customize my own wreath in the colors I want or the textures I want. I feel like it's really hard to find a good wreath with the right colors, the right thickness, something that looks like it's really good quality. Um, all of that stuff is really important to me, so this is why I like to create my own. And moving on to the next DIY, I wanted to customize a really fun little towel as a gift for a friend. So I came up with this little saying, happy fall, y'all. I think it is so cute. So I'm gonna rearrange the words on here so that I can actually use my easy press and press this onto a towel. The Cricut Design Space makes things so easy to put in text in different fonts and different sizes. Then you just select the material that you're going to be using. So for this project, I will be using the Smart iron-on material. Like I said earlier, I have really gravitated towards these smart materials because you don't have to use a mat. You literally just slide it right into your Cricut machine and it cuts everything. So it really makes things even more simple 
for using a Cricut. Don't forget to mirror your image when you are using iron-on. So this is the Cricut Smart Iron-On Heat Transfer Vinyl. So what's cool about this is you cut it down to size, put it right in your Cricut machine according to what dimensions you want your image or your text. And with the push of a button, it will cut out what you designed in your Cricut design space. So my text was going to read, happy fall y'all. And then I found this really cute wheat image in the Cricut design space library. So in order to prep this for the towel, I just have to remove the backing using the little Cricut weeding tool. I will link that for you guys down below. It makes it really, really easy to pick through all those little centers and then it's ready for iron on. The versatility of the Cricut machines is so amazing. I love that you can design things seasonally. I have already made so many fun things for fall and Christmas is just right around the corner. I cannot wait to start Christmas projects with Cricut. So I found this pack of flower sack towels. It comes in a pack of 12 on Amazon. I think they were about 12 to 14 dollars a really good deal for that many towels and also that many projects so i'm just going to fold this the way that i would want it to be folded and kind of find your center of the towel that way you can put your image right on the center there before you iron on a project it really helps to wash and dry your fabrics it also really helps if you iron whatever material you're going to be using make it really nice and flat and ready for any iron on so i cut out my little text and wheat and i'm going to place it on the towel in the position that i want i'm going to kind of angle that wheat a little bit just so it almost kind of wraps around the text and then i like to use a little piece of parchment paper just to kind of give it a little divide between the heat press Cricut has a really great heat guide online that you can use. So you input your material project and it will tell you the exact time and heat that is recommended for your project. So with the push of a button, you hold it on for just about 15 seconds. And for my project, it was recommended to do this twice. So I did 15 seconds, gave it a little break and then 15 more seconds. One of my favorite projects that I have made on the Cricut was a little kind of bedtime sweatshirt and it says, but first coffee. And I have washed that sweatshirt so many times. It just gets better and better with each wash and the text has not come off. It has held up so well. So once you have given these about a minute or two to kind of cool off, you can peel that top piece off and yeah it's complete so i just folded my towel up really cute i put a little piece of leather cording on there i found those on amazon i will link it down below and yeah i think this is such a cute gift i can't wait to gift this in a little fall gift bag this would be a really cute idea with like a bottle of wine or something really fun like that i'm going to put some caramel corn in there and then those little bats I also cut out on my Cricut machine. They're very simple and so popular for fall. They're just a basic cutout that I used using the Cricut image as well. A huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video and don't forget to check out Cricut.com for more supplies and fun ideas there. So that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite craft. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.